Good morning and welcome to City Road Baptist Church at home. Today is a very significant day in the life of the Christian Church. We celebrate Pentecost, the day in which the Holy Spirit came and made his dwelling among us. The disciples were all together. They were in one place. They were reflecting. Jesus had commanded them, stay here until you receive power from on high. You see, without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live the Christian life. So as we celebrate the coming of the Spirit among us, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you the Comforter, and he's here. He's here this morning. So let's take a moment just to pause and to allow the Spirit to begin his work in us. In fact, to continue the work in us. Join with us as we sing a couple of songs this morning. We're going to begin by singing Welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water. Never dying fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes to your will. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes to your will. Where you lead me, I will follow. When you call me, I will answer. Oh, my Lord, please teach me how to know your ways. Where you lead me, I will follow. When you call me, I will answer. Oh, my Lord, please teach me how to know your ways. Whatever it takes, whenever you want, one moment you choose, wherever you plan. Oh, my Lord, let your will be done in me. Whatever it takes, whenever you want, what moment you choose, whatever you plan, oh my Lord, let your will be done in me. So be my light, be my guide, be my way, be my will, oh my Lord, come lay your hands all over me. So be my light, be my guide, be my way, be my will. Oh, my Lord, come lay your hands all over me. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes to your will. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes to your will. Are you?
you saying yes to the will of God? Has the Spirit unfolded the plan of God for your life? Are you saying yes? Let's draw near to Father and give thanks to him for his goodness and his faithfulness. God of glory and God of grace, we come to you this morning from a fragmented world, a fragmented society, fragmented families. But thank you that you are here in the midst of the mess, helping us and enabling us to get through. Thank you that you did not leave us on our own, but you left your Holy Spirit to help us through this world. You promised that you would never leave us alone, that you'll always be with us to journey with us through this path until we meet face to face again. And today, Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into our world to reveal the way back to you, who died on the cross, rose again, and have fulfilled his promise to send the Holy Spirit to enable us to live the life to which you have called us. And as we join together with fellow believers across the world, we acknowledge your goodness, we acknowledge your presence, we acknowledge your provision, and we acknowledge your readiness to forgive, your readiness to help, your readiness to welcome us back. And so we confess our own failings, Lord, and our, knows our own sins. When we fail to be like you, when we hold grudges, when we are reluctant to let go and to take hold of the things that you want us to take hold of, when we are reluctant, Father, to allow your word to be formed in us, forgive us, we pray. Forgive our nation, Lord. Forgive our world. We come to you, Lord, with thanksgiving as we move tentatively out of the period of lockdown. We pray that you will help us to be sensitive in our responses and our dealings with everyone. But above all, Lord, I pray that we will not be fearful, but we will be people of faith who will move sensibly towards establishing the kingdom of God in a real and dynamic and tangible way here among our community within our world. We pray for every part. We pray for those who have been struggling with the issue of being alone, the issue of being, in a sense, Lord, restricted in their movements, but we pray that they will be strengthened in the knowledge that you are with them. And Father, I'm asking this morning that you will open our eyes, open the eyes of each and every individual to recognize your presence, to recognize your love, and to recognize our responsibility to respond to the provision you have made so that you might come into our lives. And give us, Lord, the strength we need to walk through this life with confidence and to fulfill all the things you have in store for us. This morning we pray for those who are still suffering, Father, who are still, Lord, bereaved and are feeling the pangs of the bereavement or the sickness they have been through. And Lord, the word tells us that by your stripes we are healed. I'm praying healing, Father, to your people. I'm praying healing to our nation. I'm praying healing to all those, Father, who are wrestling and struggling with just getting on with life. I pray for those, Father, who are feeling even suicidal at this moment, Lord. I pray that you will speak into their lives and help them to know that you can carry them through and help them to take a new stand. Help them to know that there is hope and you have a plan for them to give them a future, a good future. And Father, for those who have been in the margin, I pray that the light of your word and the truth of your word will so shine into our lives that there will be no doubt. And we will say yes and begin that journey with you. So for those in our fellowship, Father, who, who need your healing touch this morning. For those who are feeling somewhat, Lord, bereft and are left on the margins, I pray you will draw them close to you. I pray you will strengthen us. I pray that the day will arrive soon where we'll be able to gather again and to celebrate your goodness as a family. To that end, Lord, we look. But in the meantime, we thank you for your provision and we thank you for your protection and we thank you above all for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's share together the Lord's Prayer. Our amen. Father, who art amen. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and help us not to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Maxine is going to come and read to us in a moment, but I just want to share a few thoughts with you and a few notices. How have you been spending your time? How have you been using this excess amount of time? Are you allowing God to speak to you? Have you heard him speaking to you? Remember the story of Samuel? While he was there in his bed and God called him and he went to Eli. And eventually Eli recognized that God was calling the young boy. When we come aside, when we have time to reflect, it is then that God calls us and speaks to us. I want to encourage you that if God has called you, if God is asking you to do something, don't be frightened, but be ready to do what he's asking you to do, because he will enable you to do all that he expects from you. I want to thank you again for your faithful prayers for the body of Christ, for your involvement in the work of the kingdom, for the way in which you're encouraging one another and supporting one another, for your gifts of kindness, for your love that is expressed in so many different ways. I want to say thank you. Continue, my brothers and sisters, to respond to the prompting of the Spirit, whatever it might be that God is asking you to do. Say, Lord, here I am. Have your way in me. Akusa is going to sing a few songs before I bring the word to you, but I'm going to ask Maxine now to come and bring the reading. Thank you. Good morning. God bless you today and always. Our reading this morning is taken from Romans chapter 8, and I read from verses 1 to 17. I read from the New International Version. The chapter is entitled, Life Through the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For the law was powerless to do it because it was weakened by the flesh, but God did it by sending his own son to be the likeness of sinful flesh, to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. However, you who are not in the realm of the fl flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if you, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead is living in you, you are raised. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, Brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if 
you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to the spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God mm -hmm. are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, mm -hmm. so you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. Mm -hmm. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children now. If we are God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share his sufferings in order that we may share also in his glory. Amen. Thank you, Miss. Praise the Lord. Please join me as we sing some songs of worship to our most high God. Amen. Jesus, we believe in you. Jesus, we belong to you. You are the reason why we live, reason why we breathe. Jesus, we belong to you. Jesus, we belong to you you're the reason why we live the reason why we breathe today jesus we belong to you you are the reason why we breathe the reason why we live till now so you are here moving in our midst we worship you we worship you you are here moving in our houses we worship you we worship you, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are he, mending every heart. We worship you, we worship you. You are he, healing every heart. We worship you, we worship you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's sing again. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, you are more than for us, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, you are more than enough for us, Jehovah 
Let's turn now in our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. And let's think for a moment of the freedom that is ours. And not only the freedom that is ours, but let's think about the resources that God has provided for us through his spirit. Today is indeed a day of celebration and thanksgiving. A day when fear is banished and faith should arise. Why? Because we are no longer, as it were, slaves. We are no longer under the scheme of the enemy. But God has empowered us to go forward in the name of Jesus. As Maxine has said, the theme entitles Life Through the Spirit. It begins by making a bold statement. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Let's think around that for a moment. What is condemnation? You may have committed a crime. You've been found guilty and you've been sentenced for the crime you have committed. Depending on where you live will determine the sentence you receive. There are those people who will receive Maybe when they say life, it may mean 15 years. But there are those, when they say life, it means life. There are those who will be sentenced, spend the rest of their days in prison. Our world. When man disobeyed God's instruction, separated itself from God, its creator, and placed itself in a position where it was on a road leading to destruction. God in his great mercy and his great love, he saw our need. He saw where we were heading and he sent his son into our world to rescue us so that we might turn around, get back on the right path and begin a journey towards God. The beginning of that journey involves an acknowledgement of the provision of God and accepting that provision and through faith. What does faith mean? Though you cannot see, you're trusting what you have heard and you have confidence in the one who has spoken and acted on your behalf and you move in the direction towards following their instructions. So Jesus came into the world and he showed us how to live. He took on himself the penalty of the separation and the pain and the anguish and the pangs of death as he hung there on the cross. He suffered for you and for me. But it didn't stop there because he rose from the grave triumphantly and was seen by many witnesses for a number of periods, for a number of weeks. And finally, he ascended back to the Father. And then he said, he told his disciples, I will send the Holy Spirit to comfort you. The Holy Spirit that will enable you. We read in Acts chapter 2 that when the Spirit came, it was like tongues of fire that sat upon the heads of the disciples. And they began to speak in all the languages of the people who were gathered to proclaim the goodness of God. And so today, as we celebrate Pentecost, I want to tell you that God loves you. I want to tell you that the Jesus that the world tried to quash, he's alive today. And he's able not only to save you, but to give you hope for your future. 
So if you find yourself this morning in a hopeless situation, know that because of Jesus' love, you can arise from that place and begin a new journey, a new life, and come to find the purpose for which God created you. Whatever you may have done that brought you to the place where you are feeling dejected, that no good can come from your life, Jesus is saying to you, I have paid the price. And he said to the jailer, let him go. Let him go free. You're not free because of what God has done for you in Jesus. If you accept that act. You see, without Jesus, we would have no hope. No hope at all. But thanks be to God. He has declared to those who have faith in Jesus Christ that your sins are washed away. And now you are a child of God. Your sins are forgiven. The price has been paid for your sins. And now I put my spirit in you as a deposit, as a sign that you belong to me. That I will return one day and take you to myself. The opportunity to grow and to become a child of God. You see that same spirit of life is the Holy Spirit that was there present at creation as it tells us in Genesis. It tells us also in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in him was life and that life was the light of men. The Holy Spirit therefore is behind the rebirth of every Christian. It is the Holy Spirit that comes within you and fires you up and give you a desire to want to know more about God and give you a desire for the things of God and cause you to know that you are no longer on your own, but you are a child of God. When Jesus said to Nicodemus, the religious leader of his day, you must be born again. What Jesus was actually saying your religiousness, it doesn't matter how religious you are, cannot bring salvation. It doesn't matter how sincere you are about your religion, unless you come to faith to the place where you receive the forgiveness of God, you are still outside the kingdom of God. Because that which God gives, the forgiveness and the salvation, is not for sale. It is not based upon you being good enough. All that it is is that you are prepared to accept this forgiveness that he brings. He brings through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit then comes into our life. So when Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, Nicodemus says, well, how can this be? I'm a grown man. How can I change? How can I, what he said, enter my mother's womb for the second time to be born again? And Jesus responds, you must be born of the water. That speaks of the cleansing that he brings. You must be born of the spirit that generates life. And the blood that pays for all your sins. The shed blood of the Lamb of God that paid for the sin of humanity and brings us back into a new relationship. The hymn writer says, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused this pain? Yes, he died for you. That is the love of God. That is the love of God that brings a life to every human being. The Holy Spirit gives us the power and the ability we need to live the Christian life. In John 1 again, he says, he came to his very own, but his own did not receive him. However, to as many as received them, he gave the right, the ability to become children of God. Are you growing up as a child of God or are you still in the infant state? Are you taking God at his word and stepping out in faith? This morning, he says, the Holy Spirit gives power. There are those of us who feel that the Holy Spirit possesses or controls us. Let me say to you, the Holy Spirit does no such thing. The Holy Spirit indwells within us and enables us to become the child of God. It is the power of God to act in faith. It is the power of God for change. It is the power of God to love. 
It doesn't possess you. It doesn't move you around like a rock doll. But it enables you to move in sincerity and in truth. It gives you the ability to understand the word of God, to perceive your situation, to live in the midst of difficulties. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It keeps that hope alive that God's words are true and he is faithful and he will carry you through. It gives you the right perspective on life. And situation so that the things that you see around you, you come to realize that they are not the things that imparts true life. But it is knowing God. Knowing you. Knowing Jesus Christ. It is the truth of life. It is the nectar of life. Now, when you come to know the love of God and the power of God, you may say, though I have nothing, I have everything. And though it seemingly I have everything, that means nothing. All that means is to, as the, the psalmist says, one thing I desire is to dwell in the presence of God. To dwell there in the presence of God. The writer in verse 5 identifies two categories here. Verse 5 tells us about those who live according to the flesh. How are you living your life today? There are those who have taken an initial step of faith, but they revert back to their old pattern of being, believing that they have to take control of their lives rather than allowing the Spirit to guide them and to lead them and to take them into a place of liberty. There are those who are still carrying the baggages that God had forgiven you of. He has cleansed you and removed the old baggage and yet you pick them up. You carry the baggage of unforgiveness. You carry the baggage of hatred. You carry the baggage of feeling as though you are nothing. Those, my brothers, my sisters, are of the past. And you need to take hold and clothe yourself. Clothe yourself with the armor of God. As it tells us in in. Philippians, that we must clothe ourselves with the whole armor of God. Ephesians, uh, Philippians 6 verse 10. Clothe ourselves, put it on, so we know who we are. The Further on here, the writer says, we're no longer slaves. We're no longer slaves. I go right to the end of the chapter where it tells us that we are no longer slaves. Where does it say this? In verse 15. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption as a child of God. The spirit you receive brought about your adoption as a child of God. And by him we say, Daddy. We cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirits that we are God's children. If the spirit of Christ that raised, if the spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead is living within you, then be assured that you are then a child of God. So as I go back to the mindset, are you still living in the realm of the flesh or are you being transported to live within the realm of the spirit? It says those who live according to the flesh have their minds set they have a mindset that is set on the things of this world they're looking as to how to better themselves they're looking as how to achieve a comfort comfortable life they're looking at those things that say to them i am important my brothers, my sisters, there is absolutely nothing wrong with material things. The problem is when we allow material things to become our master and we are striving after them, believing that possessing those things makes us someone. You have to leave those things behind. If you have your mind set on those things, you cannot please God. You cannot please God. It tells us that those who have our minds, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit, they have their mindset 
and what the Spirit desires. What does the Spirit of God desire for you today? What does the Spirit of God desire for you this morning? It says the Spirit, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to the things of God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. So if you're finding it difficult to accept and to acknowledge the law of God, then I would dare to say that you need to think, have I truly come to Christ? Those who are in the realm of the flesh, who are living away from God, cannot please God. But let me address you fellow believers. It tells us that those who live according to the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you, you have your mind set on what the Spirit desires. is. You're saying, Father, what is your will for my life? What is your will for my life? When Samuel heard the call of God, when Eli realized what was happening, he said, when you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Are you hearing the voice of God? And are you saying, speak, Lord, your servant is listening? Are you saying, yes, Lord, yes? Or are you engaging in a dialogue, a discussion? And are you putting forth your own ideas? He says, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, verse 9 of our reading, they do not belong to Christ. If you don't have the spirit of God living within you, you do not belong to Christ. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Unless you are born again, you cannot even understand. You cannot even experience anything of the kingdom of God. You can live as it were. As though you are serving God and doing all the things that you know you should be doing. But let me say to you, my brothers and my sisters. There are many, many good people with good hearts who are living within our world who live right and justly, but have not acknowledged Christ in their lives. And those things don't bring salvation. Salvation is acknowledging that you're outside of the kingdom of God, and it is only through faith in God, through Jesus Christ, you can enter into that relationship. If I were to ask you what your name is, you would be able to tell me immediately. Where you live, you'd be able to tell me where you live. What country you are citizens of, you are be able to tell me. And so I ask you, have you made a commitment of your life to Jesus Christ? Remember that God has given humanity freedom of choice. He will never take that from you. But you can exercise the freedom of God to become a citizen of the kingdom of God. There are those people who will move from one country and live in another. And they will give up their citizenship in order to possess the citizenship of the other country. Are you prepared? To give up the responsibility of your life to the God who created you, who loves you, to the God who wants the best for you. As I conclude this morning, in verse 14, it tells us, verse 12 rather, it says, brothers and sisters, when you come to Christ, the only obligation that we have is to walk in the way of the Spirit. We have no obligation to, to live according to the flesh. Our obligation is to live according to the Spirit. He says, because if you go back to living as though you are not a believer, then you will surely die. But if you live according to the Spirit... And by the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the flesh, of the body, of the past, you will live. I encourage you today on this glorious day as we remember and give thanks to God for giving his Spirit to the world. For making himself available to all those who will say yes. I want to encourage you not only to say yes but to determine like the prodigal son to arise from where you are and to make your way back to your father. He knows what's in your heart. He knows the content of your heart. Arise then, therefore, 
and move back towards the spirit of God. But before I conclude, I want to address the whole issue. You may be asking, how do I know as to whether or not I have the spirit of God? In John chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches and the branches produce the fruit. I'm sure that you are sensible enough to recognize a, a fruit tree when you see the fruits it produced. You may not be able to tell that it's a fruit tree when there is no fruit. But the moment the tree is in fruit, you can tell what tree that is. In Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 20, it tells us by their fruits, you shall know them. How are you known? How is your life what fruits are you producing? What is it saying about you? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, it tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. And you would do well, my sisters and my brothers, to examine your life and to see whether these aspects of the fruit of the Spirit is within us. Are they emerging or are they completely dormant? Because if they are not emerging and transforming our lives, then we truly need to ask ourselves the question, am I a child of God? Or I just only look like a child of God? It tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, it's peace, it's patience, it's kindness. Go to, to Galatians 5, 22 and read it for yourself. Against these things, it says there is no law. I want to encourage you, therefore, to go forward in the name of Jesus and let the spirit that brought Christ back from the dead lives in you. It says the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And then in verse 17, as I conclude, he says, now if we are children, then we are heirs. We are heirs with Christ. Heirs of God and co heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. What are the possible sufferings? Don't blame your sufferings for your faith unless it is directly linked. If your suffering is a result of your own lifestyle, don't blame God. But if you're suffering because you are standing up for Christ and living for him and as a direct result you've been marginalized, then hold on my sisters, my brothers, because Christ is with you and he will rescue you. I pray that God will take his word and place it in our heart and help us to realize what the spirit is, who the spirit is, the spirit that brings comfort and hope who reveals the will of God who enables us to communicate with our father that we will know that without the spirit we are dead indeed and unless the fruit of the spirit is evident within our lives we can say whatever we want let the fruit speaks this morning that you're a child of God amen I pray that God will not only take his word and bless you but he will place it in your heart and there he will fill you with his hope and his joy. Father, I pray your blessing upon each one. That those who have heard your word, that they will know that you love with an everlasting love. And maybe today is the day when they need to be born again. To receive the forgiveness that you bring. To ask and invite you into their lives. So that they will know the power of the risen Lord. For Christ's sake. Amen. As we conclude this morning, we're going to sing together that beautiful song. And as we sing this together this morning, I pray that you will not only hear it, but you will respond to it and you will experience the blessing that come from Jesus Christ. Let your living water flow over my soul. As Maxine and Josephine join me, let's join together and sing this song. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll. Jesus, 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 Father, 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 Holy Spirit, 
Spirit, Spirit, Spirit. Come now, Holy Spirit, and take control. Hold me in your loving arms and make me whole. Wipe away all doubt and fear and take my pride. Draw me to your love and keep me by your side. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, 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 Holy Spirit, 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 Spirit. Give your life to Jesus, let him fill your soul. Let him take you in his arms and make you whole. As you give your life to him, he'll set you free. You will live and reign with him eternally. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holy Father, 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 Father. Spirit, Spirit, Spirit. Go in Jesus' name. In the knowledge that he loves you with an everlasting love. And if you are prepared to receive that love, you can start a new life today. Let us share the grace. May the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the love of God and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you and be with you.